They say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Baiters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen is brought to you by... The city of Stanford, Kentucky. Come back home to Stanford. L81 Bottling Company. Taste, love, and share the tradition. Woods Equipment Company. Has every tool you need to make working the land as rewarding as hunting it. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. It's a beautiful day. Yes, it is. I like it. You know what? It wasn't so beautiful a couple weeks ago. Right. It was raining and raining and raining. And typically when we go on vacation, when we leave, we go somewhere where it's raining or the weather's really bad and it's beautiful here. Right. We hit this one just right because we had nine or ten days in a row where it was like 60 degrees beautiful. and raining. We went to Florida. Now, we go to Florida and we like to go tropical places because it's warm. Right. And we used to try to go in the wintertime. And I, I do have a medical condition. When this arm gets cold, it hurts. And we like to get away. It's nice to go away. Every now and then. Yes. This is our base. <laughs> we'll never leave Kentucky. But we hit it right. But what do you think about when you think of Florida or anywhere on the coast? Seafood. Yeah, it's, not so, it. much, it's not so much just the environment. It's not so much the ocean. It's the seafood. We ate too much seafood. Well, we probably went overboard, <laughs> to say the least. Um, we had oysters, oysters, oysters. Every night. And we visited a couple places that you're going to see tonight. We're going to share some recipes with you. Now, when we're out and traveling, we always try to come back with good ideas and talk to local chefs who have ideas and doing right. some things that maybe we haven't done before. So let's share a little of our vacation with you, and we're probably going to come back with a recipe. Now, the one recipe that you'll see us do that we're prepared for tonight normally would have conch in it. I like conch. Conch is a mollusk, and we'll talk about that later. We don't have conch. No, we don't. In Kentucky. You know what we do have? A lot of? What? Bluegill. Yes, we do. <laughs> so tonight, we're going to make bluegill fritters. Now, you yeah. can do it with bass. You could do it with any kind of, you can do it with catfish, bluegill's probably. Bluegill's good, though. Bluegill's bluegill good. is good. It's delicious. So first of all, let's take a little trip to Florida, see if we can come up with a few good recipes. You know what? We've got so many good recipes that we can, we can bring back here to Kentucky that they might kind of lapse over into next week good as idea. well. Uh -huh. You know good what I'm talking idea. about? Yes, I do. All right, let's take a trip real quick. All right, we are relentless in our pursuit of good seafood. We're in South Florida. Usually we go to the Keys. We like to fish a lot. In my former life, if you'll remember, I was a fishing show host. Hunting and fishing, that's all we did. Now, as our life progresses, we spend some time in the South, in the Deep South. We're on vacation, we enjoy the sunshine and the seafood. We're looking at two particular restaurants. Right out there is the Sanibel Bridge. We've been having a great time catching a few fish, some sea trout, a few, uh, snappers, mangrove snappers, but just a nice relaxing trip. But more than anything, we're looking for seafood recipes, and we found one spot in Matt Lache, which is just right up the road. Now, conch. We're gonna talk about conch, we're gonna talk about mullet. We're gonna go to the Blue Dog Cafe in Matt Lache. When we talked to folks in Lexington, the lady was real nice. She had a shirt on, said Blue Dog Cafe, and she says, you need to go there. Well, we did, and it was wonderful. Now you're gonna visit with us, but also, Salty Papas. Guess what? They're from Kentucky originally. We're gonna talk about their shrimp and grits, all local. They get their stuff. If they say Gulf shrimp or Gulf oysters, they're Gulf shrimp and they're Gulf oysters. We're gonna to talk to them as well, but let's start out and go to Matt Lache to the Blue Dog Cafe.
Hey, we're in Matt Lachey today, and we're out here with Jesse. Now, let's yeah. tell us about the Blue Dog Bar and Grill. We're right on the highway here. Right. Beautiful area. We just crossed the bridge. Where's Matt Lachey? Matt Lachey is uh, it's on Pine Island. It's a little island right off uh, Cape Coral, Fort Myers area. It's been here a long time. It's a long time fishing community out here. What makes you guys stand out? What's different? I already know because I've eaten here. <laughs> well, tell us. Our focus is all on the food. That's what we want to do. Give people great food at a reasonable price. And uh, it's interaction. And just make people feel like, hey, this is a really nice place. Hey, like they like coming here. They have a good time. Now, something you, you do is a little bit different. Now, mullet. People have had it probably smoked in a dip, and you do make a dip, right. which I want to try that. I haven't tried that uh, yet. You're in for I want to try that, but you you take it a step further. When I first came over, I thought of mullet as a bait fish because nobody eats on the East Coast. And everybody said, oh, when I came over here, put mullet on the menu. And so reluctantly I did. And then I just started, yeah, I, I started to embrace it. And then I realized, like, well, this is a, a very integral part of this community. Something that we don't find in Kentucky, it's not readily accessible, is conch. I love conch. Right. Now, you've got it here, and you've got also the fritters. Now, what is a fritter for those who might not know back up in the... Conch fritter is kind of like a, a hush puppy or a, uh, cornbread, but ours come out in patties, make it different. And then people will see like, wow, that's really amazing. And then we serve it with our sweet, spicy Pine Island sauce, which is that's really the kicker. what I'm going to order today, along with the fried conch. Now, let's talk about a conch. Okay, folks, here's what a conch shell looks like. Now, we've all held them up to our ears or made a horn out of them or whatever, but they do have this meaty mollusk inside of them which is taken out and that is it's kind of tough so what's the process in getting it's that it's really tough and uh, so what we do when we get it is just beat it beat it and then beat it some more that's how you tenderize it that's the only way to do it. otherwise it's going to be like rubber and everybody's going to hate it do you have any mullet on the menu today yes i do actually uh, i have a mullet sampler platter you get a piece of fried mullet, a piece of blackened mullet, and a scoop of our smoked mullet fish dip. Okay, here's what I want to order today. I want the, the sampler, I want the fried conch, mm -hmm. and I want an order of your fresh shrimp, and of course your conch fritters and, fr and fried conch. Does that sound right. reasonable? Sounds like a plan. Let's go watch the sea outside. All right, I gotta try the fritters. You know, it's typically when you get, and I, we got some conch fritters while we're down here, little video things. Yeah. These look like they're busting with flavor. That's ridiculous. The consistency of the, of the bread and the conch together, and your conch is absolutely wonderful. And that's what it looks like. Yeah. I hear a pound in it back there right yeah. now. Man, oh man, that right there will change your mind. Look at the, look at that white, flaky fish. As they tell you, you know, they're like, oh, well, I had mullet. You haven't had our mullet. This right here, <laughs> Blue Dog Cafe. Matt Lachey, Nick Lachey's brother. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for having us out today and sharing some wonderful recipes with us. You guys need to come right here and sit down and chow down. I, trust me, it's the best stuff I ever had. We came in here last night. Now, we never have a place on until we actually try the place. Tell us the name of your outfit. Salty Papa Shrimp House. Salty Papa's Shrimp House. Say that five times fast as you can. No, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> now, here's, here's, here's the thing. There's a Kentucky connection here. Yes. Tell me what that is. My husband is from Kentucky, as well as Papa and Mama. And Papa, who we named the restaurant after, uh, so we painted our bar blue and hung the Kentucky signs. And so, in honor of Papa and the family. Now, here we are down around here in the Cape Coral area. How often do you see somebody come in from Kentucky down here? Quite a bit. There are a lot of visitors as well as um, snowbirds, as we call them. Right. Seasonal residents from Kentucky, yeah. Now, we've eaten a lot of places, but what would you consider your specialty? I tell you what, I had your shrimp and grits last night, and I've never had shrimp and grits like that. Oh, ever. thank you. Is that wrong? Is that kind of up there at the top of your that, list? Yeah, that's one of our most popular dishes. Um, everything we've done is our own recipes. Um, but like the Charleston shrimp and grits, we, we researched the old Charleston recipes and then tried to be authentic yet make it our own. Um, and basically this restaurant pays homage to the tradition of Gulf seafood, uh, the fishermen and crabbers that have 
for years and years, provided you know fresh Gulf seafood, as well as uh, each of the southern states. We try and have a little dish for each state, and the shrimp and grits is for Charleston, North Carolina. Tell us about Salty Papa's. Where's that come from? Well, Salty Papa um, is one of my favorite people I've ever met, and he is salty in the tradition of salt life, not salty like he's bad. He is a son of a boat builder, um, and he grew up clamming and fishing and really living a salty life. And when I married my husband and met him, um, I said, do you remind me of a little uh, little Papa Hemingway? So I started calling him Papa. So when we opened this place, I was thinking salty something, seafood salty, salty Papas. And so we're paying tribute to one of the sweetest men I've ever known. How can people look you up? Uh, well, we're our website, saltypapashrimphouse.com. Uh, great Facebook page, Salty Papa Shrimp House. Sounds good. Yeah. Thank you so much for putting us at the perfect seafood feast Aww, last night. You know what? You. I met my friend from 40 years ago. We hadn't seen each other. So we met at your place last Aww. night. Eating up with a broken nose, and that's all I can say about that. <laughs> I won't ask. It was on. <laughs> I mean, nobody hit anybody, but there was a, a door. Something happened. And we had a lot of fun. Yeah. But we had good food. Well, that's that all good. Started. Thank you so much for talking with <laughs> Thank me. Thank you. <laughs>All right, so we want to make fritters. Now, a lot of times down south when you get fritters, they're, they look like a, a hush puppy. Yeah, per se. Ball. When we went to the Blue Dog, they were flat. The best ever. They were like, like a potato They were really, cake. really yeah. good. And Jesse shared his recipe with us, and we're going to share it with you in just a little bit. But first, we've got to get our conch. I mean, our bluegill. bluegill. And we're going to do that right up the road. Albert Davis Lake, let's go catch us some bluegill so we can have some bluegill fritters. Right, we're back from Florida, but the good times have just begun because it's nice up here in Kentucky now. So, we saw the conch fritters. Now, I've never had fritters like that. They're flat, they're delicious. Most, most of the time you get them, they're like hush puppies. So, obviously, we're not gonna come up here to Elmer Davis Lake and get us some conch, but what they do have is bluegill. Now you've heard of making patties out of bluegill. We're gonna to try to make fritters out of bluegill, but the first thing we gotta do is catch some bluegill. So Nikki's got the worms, I got the fly rod. Let's see if we can catch a few. These things are pretty fast. Aren't they great? I will catch you. I knew you'd like it. Now the great thing about what we're doing today, when making fritters, you don't have to have huge fish. We're just gonna use the meat from these fish and otherwise, size bluegill that you wouldn't wanna keep. Now this is, a, this is a keeper any day, but when you can catch fish like this, any bit of meat goes into that fritter and it's delicious. Again, we don't have conch, but man, hopefully we can get some bluegill. Future fritter critter. Is Nikki? Now I don't know you've heard the word fritter before, and down south, it's all about the conch. But I'm telling you what, same thing applies. We're gonna break the rules a little bit. And bring a very southern recipe way up north. Normally I might throw that one back, but being that we're cutting parts and pieces, that's gonna be fritter material right there. Oh yeah, that's a good bluegill. Now that is red ear. See that red flap on his opercle or ear as some people call it? Some people call him shellcracker. And look how wide he is, that's gonna make some good 
fillets for our fritters. Yummy. Yeah, that's what we're looking for right there. Yes, sir, Ray Bob. We're getting close. Where is Nikki? Oh yeah, big male. Perfect. Getting closer to fritters every minute. I've got my Tilly hat on, that's why my face is shadowed right now. You can barely see who I am. But you know what? We're just out here fly fishing today. I'm a little popper. This is the way I was brought up fishing by my dad. You know, my day job used to be as a hunter or gatherer. Now, I enjoy my good organic hunting and fishing food. You know, you can look at some shots here when I was working with Kentucky Field. Now, I did that for 20 years. Emmy Award winning show, one of the best jobs I've ever had. But part of Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen is bringing back the food that we gather while we hunt and fish and trying new recipes and today's the perfect marriage of that coming back from florida with a great recipe and then trying to twist around turn around into a kentucky deal so we're gonna have kentucky bluegill fritters now some of the stuff that i used to do pulling the bow back with my teeth here's some fish now that we shot down below barkley these are asian carp and then these things get up to 80 90 100 pounds and these are actually really good to eat later on we'll try to talk with some of the people who are coming up with the good recipes and uses for this fish, which are in, in the waterways by the gazillions. Now they are actually some of the best fish I've ever eaten. They have an odd bone structure. You have to cut those bones out to get to it, but it's very good meat. Now that's not gonna be a big part of this show, but occasionally when we do go out to gather some meat, some protein, in this case, bluegill, and we'll take a little fishing trip every now and then. And now we're gonna get back to it. A few more and we'll be ready to go. He's a beauty. Now that's what I'm talking about. Good hand-sized bluegill right there. Very quickly. We get to get him one nest of them. And again, we're not trying to catch 800 bluegill. We're gonna to try to catch just enough for a mess of fritters. If we get 10 to 15, we're good to go. may keep I'm not sure it's a good bank that'll do for fritters <laughs> but uh, what do you say we get this thing started sounds good all right let's row half a cup of cornmeal now you can use white or yellow. Two cups of flour. Let's go ahead and put our baking powder in. All right, let's go ahead and pop our egg in there that we just pulled out from under our little chicken up on the hill. Then let's uh, come back with the cup and a quarter of clam juice. We'll mix that up real good. All right, let's go for a quarter teaspoon of cayenne. Let's go for a half a tablespoon of Lowry's a half a tablespoon of sugar. Now, here's where I'm gonna take artistic license and go a little bit more than that. Let's, go ahead, more. let's go ahead and go. Good? Yep. Now we bring in the rest of our ingredients. Mm -hmm. Man, I'm telling you what, I, I like where this is going. I like the smell. Right here he's calling for three quarters of a cup of onion, three quarters of a cup of green pepper, and an eighth a cup of red pepper. You can adjust according to how much you want. You can see that that's, you know, that's about a little bigger than a softball. So this is a lot of stuff to put in it, but I remember eating that stuff. It had that's a lot good. of pepper taste to it. So we've got our jalapenos cut up. I'm gonna put some fresh corn, just to have a little bit of corn in there. And we put some garlic in there. We're gonna come back, let's go ahead and put some pepper in there, some black pepper for Glenn. Is that for Glenn? Yes, yeah, for Glenn. All right, so now let's dump, let's just dump let's everything see. in. All right. When we talk about our bluegill and cutting up our bluegill, 
Let's refer back to our tilapia filleting that we did a while back. Now, it's a really easy process. You just basically take the fish, go behind the gill, all the way down the backbone to the tail, flop that over, get between the skin, come back, cut out that rib cage, and then we just dice that up. Now, what we've got here is really is a, like a little meal. It smells good. It's just wonderful stuff. Now let's go ahead and add our fish. Yeah. This is diced bluegill. Now look at the nice color there. You smell that? Yeah, I smell it. Yum. That's mixed up really good. Now even though those bluegill are smaller, we use the same method, mm -hmm. and we get nothing but meat, so you don't have to worry about bones in any of this. So now we're gonna take a little bit of oil in here. We're gonna do a little dip. Oh, yum. Now we're gonna take this, and you remember how you kind of flatten they were, it out? Yeah, they were wonderful. That's my kind of fritter. Now, you've heard of people catching small bluegill, grinding the whole thing up and making a patty out of that. This is similar, but when you get all those peppers and the garlic and everything in here, I'm telling you what, it really comes out nice. Ooh, can we maybe some more? So in order to, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and make a bunch. I'll tell you what, if you want to go ahead and dip me up some spoonfuls, that's a little trick. Put your little hot grease in here and then dip and it won't stick. We're just going to, we're just going to let them get shape okay. and firm up a bit and then we're going to take and put it in a deep fryer to let the inside cook real good and brown them a little bit further. I like how they're more together, mm -hmm. like that. Not mushy in the middle, nice and crunchy. You smell that? I'm ready. <laughs> now, if you can picture in your mind the, the smell of, I get the jalapenos, I get mm -hmm. the peppers, I get the onions. If you can imagine all those smells combined with a little bit of fish. And it's fried this is nicely. To dig in. I like the crunch. These are the best fritters. Mm. Wow. <laughs> so basically, you have a little meal right here. Perfectly healthy. That is good. Mm -hmm. Nothing in a bad. Couldn't get conked, but I've, I've always been fascinated by the thought process of people say that they take their bluegill up and they, they crunch them up. I don't want the bones. So we caught bluegill big enough mm -hmm. that we could get a little filet out of it, boneless. That is absolutely delicious. If you're in the mood for some seafood, but you're still here, you can always catch bluegill. Right. Wow. Now, if you want to look for some other recipes that you might not have seen, check out timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. We have gazillions of recipes, things from all over. Also, Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen Facebook page and like it. Moses is so <laughs> upset because he doesn't have a fritter. You think we should give him a bite here in a minute? Maybe a little piece. And remember, it's all about good times, good friends, and really good eats. Mm. Dig in. Official finger food. Mm. To order a cookbook or DVD of the show, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com. Special thanks to CKY Canoe, Kentucky, Furniture World Superstore, Housewarmings, Lodge Cast Iron, Tater Knob Pottery and Farm. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen is brought to you by Good Foods Co-op, Kentucky Sheep and Wool Producers Association, and the Kentucky Goat Producers Association, Marksbury Farm Market, Weisenberger Mill, Your Village Shop, Diamond Gusset Jeans, the original gusset jean, careful craftsmanship, 
continual improvement. Diamond Gusset Jeans, born and worn in the USA since 1987.